Hey guys, Mr. Milton here. Today we're going to talk about factoring quadratics when a equals 1. At the end of this video, you should be able to factor a trinomial into two binomials. Alright, so let's jump into it. Um, the general form of a quadratic, remember that means that the highest exponent is 2, is ax squared plus bx plus c. a, b, and c are numbers or coefficients, if you want to call them that. F's in there. All right. Um, so let's multiply x plus four times x plus three. Just shows um, where we're getting to. Okay. Remember, there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can do the FOIL method. You can do the box method. Um, I'll just FOIL. I have x squared plus three x plus four x plus twelve. Okay, and then combine my like terms, 3 and 4, that gives us 7. So my final answer should be x squared plus 7x plus 12. Alright. Um, the point of this is just being able to identify, well first of all seeing where these numbers come from, and then I'd be able to identify A, B, and C. So A is the number in front of x squared. Okay, x squared is not a part of A. The number in front of x squared is 1. The number in front of x is b. That number is 7. And the number that's by itself with no variable by it is c. And in this case, that number is 12. Okay, these numbers are all positive because, um, well, um, they're all plus signs. So looking back, notice how we got the middle term. We multiplied um, 3x so the outs we multiplied the outside terms and the inside terms sorry in our foil. Um, of each binomial and then added the new terms together. Okay, <clears throat> and then the last term is we multiplied the last of terms of each one. Multiply. Okay, so if we do this next one, um, same, x times x is x squared, um, x times 2 is 2x, negative 5x negative 10. My like terms here have x squared uh, minus 3x minus 10. Okay? Alright, notice these things below, they are very um, closely tied to what we are learning today. What are the last terms of each binomial? The last term was negative 5 and 2. Negative 5, the last term here, plus 2, the term here. Okay? What's the sum of these terms? So negative 5 plus 2, when we added that together, that gives us negative 3. Where do we see that sum? Notice that that's our b term. What's the product of these two numbers? So negative 5 times 2, that product will be negative 10. Where do we see that product? Notice that that's our c term. Okay. All right, <clears throat> so if we did this again, if we wanted to just see kind of that shortcut of it, we could say, okay, these two added together, negative one and negative eight, that gives us negative nine x, that would be our b term. Negative one times negative eight, that would be our c term, which is positive eight, and then x times x is x squared, okay? So that's just us looking at this shortcut and applying it to this problem down here. Now let's see if it works out when we actually do the multiplication. x times x is x squared. x times negative 8, negative 8x. Eight negative 1 times x, negative 1x. Negative 1 times 8, positive 8. Add together our like terms and we'll get x squared minus 9x plus 8. You'll notice it's the same thing. Did it work? Sure did. Okay. 
So now, what we're going to do is we're going to do what we did in the last couple lessons in reverse. Okay, and this is called factoring. Basically doing the opposite of multiplying binomials. Okay, we want to find two numbers. This is how we're going to do it. I'll set up the method of what we're going to use. I call it the Xbox method, but we'll walk through it here. We're going to find two binomials. And we multiply it together, give me the trinomial above. The first terms in the binomials must be x and x, because that's the only combination that multiplies to give you x squared. Okay, this is only true when a equals 1. That's why the title of this is factoring when a is 1. Now we just need to find the last terms of each binomial. And to do this, we want to find two numbers that multiply to give me c, in this case it's 12, and add to give me b, in this case it's 7. Okay, as you noticed when we did those problems before, um, those middle terms, that's, that's how it came out. The last term is 12 comes from the product of the last terms in the binomials. We're looking for two numbers that um, multiply to 12. Okay, since the middle term 7x comes from the sum of the outer terms, and the inner terms of the two binomials, we're looking for two numbers that add to 7. Okay. All right. So what are those numbers? What two numbers multiply to give you 12 and add to give you 7? <coughs> those two numbers are 3 and 4. I'll show you how we write this down in a little bit. So write these in the first terms as the product of two binomials. So here we go. We know that we're going into two binomials. This we know we're going to get to factor it out. We said that the first term in each of these binomials has to be x. From there, we said we need to find two numbers that multiply to give us 12 and add to give us 7. And we said those two numbers would be 3 and 4. Positive 3, positive 4. Okay. And so that's our process. We'll go through those a little bit smoothly, more smoothly down here at the bottom. Okay. So um, we want to list the factor pairs. It says find two numbers that multiply to give you negative 24 and add to give you negative 10. Okay. This is the same question as me saying factor x squared minus 10x minus 24. Okay. So if I'm trying to factor this, I'd say, okay, I know that I'm going to get x and x here. And now I have to find two numbers that multiply to give me negative 24 and add to give me negative 10. If you have trouble finding that out, here's what I do. You can find a million number combinations that add to give you negative 10, but only a few will multiply to give you negative 24. So always think about the multiplication first. How do I multiply to get negative 24? Okay. Um, I'm going to put some numbers together, 1 and 24, 2 and 12. 3 and 8, 4 and 6, 6 and 4. So now that I have 6 and 4, I'm going to stop. Okay. And I'm going to look at these signs in the problem. These signs will help us out and tell us what our numbers will look like. Okay. This sign is in front of our product number. Okay. Our product means multiplication. If we're multiplying and we get a negative number, we should know something. Okay, if this is positive, it means that we have the same sign. That means we're either multiplying a negative times a negative or a positive times a positive. If this is negative, that means we have different signs. Okay, so in this case, we know that we have different signs here. One of these columns is negative, one of these columns should be positive. In order to choose which column is negative and which column is positive, we look at this sign. This is the sign of the larger number. Okay, so here it's negative. That means our, our bigger number's negative. So now in this larger number column, we're going to have all these negatives. Okay, now 
you only need to do this really if you're having trouble figuring out the two numbers. If you said, oh, I know what two numbers do that, then you're good. You can um, have those two numbers in. Okay, but um, what we'll do if we're having trouble figuring out numbers, we'll take these numbers and we'll add them together. One plus negative, or one minus 24 is negative 23. 2 minus 12, negative 10. 3 minus 5, negative, sorry, 3 minus 8, negative 5. 4 minus 6, negative 2. All right, and so we'll see that, hey, this is negative 10. That's what we were looking for. It must be these two numbers, 2 and negative 12. Okay. All right. So what we'll do from here, okay, is we'll use this box method. Okay, and the box method isn't 100% necessary here, but I'm, I'm definitely doing this in order for us to be able to use this when it is 100% necessary. Okay, now what our box method is going to ask us to do is we take these two numbers that we found, 2x, negative 12x, okay, and we factor out our GCFs between each row. So our GCF between x squared and 2x is x, between negative 12 and negative 24 is negative 12. Between 2 and negative 24 is 2. Between x and negative 12, x is x. Okay, and what we factored out now will be our binomials. x plus 2, x minus 12. Okay. All right, so that was kind of a long way of it. We will go through most of these problems down here. I'll leave like one for you guys to do. And then um, hopefully you'll be experts at it. So let's go into it. This problem here, we need to factor this into two binomials. I'm going to look for two numbers. And, and this is how I usually write this out as the Xbox method. I'm going to look for two numbers that multiply to give me 15 and add to give me 8. Those two numbers, 3 and 5. So in my box... I'm going to write out my terms. I have x squared 15. Then my 3 and my 5 will go here. 3x, 5x. And I'll go through each row in each column and factor out the GCF. x, 5. The biggest number that fits into x squared and 5x is x. Between 3x and 15 is 3. So then I have x plus 3, x plus 5. I'll do the same thing here for number two. Um, I look and I need to find two numbers that multiply to give me negative 21 and add to give me four. Okay, so they multiply to give me a negative. I know they're different signs. The bigger number is positive. I'm thinking seven and negative three. Seven minus three is four. Seven times negative three is negative 21. Okay, so now in my box. x squared, negative 21, my first and last term, and then my two middle terms here, 7x, negative 3x. Go through each row in each column, take out my GCF, x, 7, negative 3x. Okay, notice I take out the negative when I have two negatives in a row. Then I know I have to take out the negative. So now I have x plus 7, x minus 3. Okay, I'm going to leave three for you guys to do, so do three. <laughs> number four, looking for two numbers that multiply to give me 16 and add to give me negative 10. Okay, multiplies to give me a positive, so I know that they're going to be the same sign. This is negative, so I know that they're both going to be negative. Numbers, negative 8, negative 2. Notice here that we did this box method. Now, I, I told you I wanted to show you this so that you could do it later. We will need it when A is not 1. But um, if you notice our answers here, they all come out to be the two numbers that we found earlier. Okay, So that's kind of the shortcut of this. If I find these two numbers when a is 1, that's my answer. x minus 8, x minus 2. Okay, Number 9, I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to give me 9 and add to give me 10. Now this is a big... Um, cause of a headaches for a lot of people because they always forget um, that you can multiply to get 9 and, and add and get a bigger number.
Okay, if I'm trying to find two numbers that multiply to give me 9, there's not very many options. 3 and 3, which most people will think of. And then 1 and 9. 1 times 9 is 9. 1 plus 9 is 10. So I'll have x plus 1 and x plus 9. Okay? And then for number 6, I'm going to set up this x and I'm going to ask you guys to do this. We're trying to find two numbers that multiply to give us negative 6 and add to give us the number in front of x, which is negative 1. Okay? So try to find two numbers that multiply to give you negative 6, add to give you negative 1, factor that, and give me the answer down here. Alright, see you guys when I see you.